So today we're going to review a new type of lithium iron phosphate battery cell, which is very, very durable. These are actually unique compared to all the other battery cells we've been testing lately. They're called fortune lithium iron phosphate cells, and these terminals are so strong that you can use an impact gun. And it also has a case where you can put your own threaded steel rod and make your own battery in minutes. And there's terminal covers. So you don't have to worry about short circuiting anything out and you can put a BMS on top. So a very cool battery, easy to work with, and it comes with bus bars that can handle 150 amps. So I'm finally for the first time in months actually excited to build one of these things because these are so unique. And look at how nice these cells look, you guys. We have an overpressure valve in this little hole right here. We have a positive and a negative and I put all of these cells in series and four cells makes a 12 volt battery. And the company sent out a threaded steel rod in these nuts. Once you do that, then you can easily screw this back on here and then shove it through the hole and build your battery. And now you just need to add three more rods to the other holes. And now the cells are connected together and what's really cool is that there's an air space for convective airflow between the cells and that's pretty important for prismatic cells of any kind. I mean, look at how beefy these terminals are. They are absolute monsters. And look at the bus bars that it comes with. These are really nice. And look at how much room you have on each terminal to add balance leads or whatever else you want. Also, there's a little hole here for balance leads and it's just so well constructed, so heavy duty. And now I wired up the balance lead through these little holes and it's nice and organized. Now we're gonna add the terminal nuts and it even comes with nylock nuts, which are great for vibration. So this will be perfect for mobile systems. And these nuts require a size 18 millimeter socket. And for this test, we're gonna use a DALI BMS that's rated for 100 amps and connected to the negative, but this is too small for this large of a terminal, so I'm gonna to have to swap this out. Now the BMS is upgraded and added to the battery. Now we're gonna add a positive cable and a nut. Now we're gonna add the covers on top of the battery. I should add that I dropped one of these battery cells and it survived and it cracked a little bit, but everything looks really good. It was an accident when I first got these things. Guys, look at that. Now we just need to slap this BMS on top and add our balance cable. And that's it, we have a fully built battery. That was so easy and it's super strong. Now we're gonna add a charger and do a quick capacity test. These are 60 amp hour cells and these are 100 amp hour cells. And right now we are speed charging at 40 amps and it's so nice to have air between the cells because these are getting hot. And what's cool about these terminal covers is you can still access the terminals so you can check the individual cell voltages while it charges. And these cell voltages are really close together even at a high state of charge. So they might be top balanced, but that's a really good sign. Also, these batteries come with another bus bar for parallel and series configuration or a series configuration if you want the cell side by side like this. How cool is that? And as I said earlier, these can handle 150 amps, which is plenty for most people. Is there anything that I dislike about these batteries so far, you guys? I can't think of anything. And we just hit 14.5 volts, so this battery is fully charged. Now we're pulling 22 amps, and we're going to come back in five hours and see what our capacity test results are. And these are the capacity test results, 783 watt hours and 61.3 amp hours. And what's crazy is I actually did a 0.36C test instead of a 0.2C. So this should be more like 65 amp hours. I forgot that this is not a 100 amp hour battery. So I made a little mistake, but it still pulled full capacity, which is a really good sign. God, aren't these cells cool, you guys? It's passed every test so far and they're so nice. Also, these cells are rated to 3000 cycles at an 80% depth of discharge. But that's when you're cycling it very quickly. If you have it at a reduced C rate for solar, for example, and you keep them in a relatively cool environment, you should always get 5,000 to 10,000 cycles. The Simply 5 warranty is 10,000 cycles for lithium iron phosphate. So you should be able to get a lot of cycles out of any of these battery cells that we test. Now that we've built a small battery, let's build a big battery. By the way, these are pure copper because it scratched it off and you can see it now. So now we have a new problem. I don't know what kind of case to put this thing in. It's pretty big, especially for 100 amp hour cells. These are massive. So look at the size difference, guys. 100 amp hour cells, 100 amp hour cells. 
And that's probably the biggest downside is their size and weight. These are really hefty. So now we upgraded the BMS so it can actually handle 100 amps continuous charge and discharge. And look at that, that's pretty nice. So now I need to think of a way to slap this on this battery and I don't know what to do. I don't know of any cases that are this large that look good. So I think I'm just gonna find a way to mount it straight to this battery. So we're just going to slap the BMS on top and call it a day. I'm sure we can make a better case, but if you're using these for like a stationary system, I think you're going to mount the BMS on the wooden board behind it or next to it. That's what I've been doing with my stationary system. But if you want to use these for a mobile battery, you need to put an enclosure of some form around it. This would not do. Actually, this might actually do because this is pretty strong, maybe with lots of tape, because these are protected. So you might be able to use this. Now the battery is charging and we are pushing 28.7 amps so the BMS is at over voltage the current dropped to zero so this battery is fully charged and we're gonna do the capacity test for this test we're gonna pull 100 amps because I want to see how well this upgraded BMS works now that the wires are swapped out and right now we're pulling 96 to 103 amps and we're gonna see how long it can power this load for so yeah it might cut off early this is a very demanding test Uh oh so we only pulled three minutes and five amp hours. That's not that great. So let's reduce it to 95 amps and see if it can pull that load indefinitely. So now we're pulling 95 to 100 amps. Now we've run it for 13 amp hours and we're spiking at 98 amps. And this BMS is staying very cool to the touch and so are the wires. The hottest part are actually these connections and these wires. So yeah, this is doing really well up here. I need to upgrade the wires on this inverter. So I changed the overcurrent settings on the BMS for 110 amps and it's powering it nicely, but now it's pretty warm at 44 degrees Celsius and we're at 67 amp hours. So everything's running really nicely so far. In one hour, we pulled 105 amp hours and 1.31 kilowatt hours. But these are very new cells, and that's pretty common for the first couple cycles to pull past capacity. But at a 1C rate, that's really good. And they're warm, but they're not that warm. And it's just so nice to have that airflow, guys. This is such a good design. And the BMS is at 43 degrees Celsius, or 110 degrees Fahrenheit, which is plenty good. So in my opinion, I really, really like these. I could totally see myself building a large 48 volt system with these. I have the bus bars so I can arrange them in any shape I want. They pull full capacity. The biggest downside is the size and the weight for aluminum case cells. These are pretty big and hefty. But besides that, I think everything else is perfect. What do you guys think? I mean, it has everything, strong terminals, Great cycle life. I was even reading on the data sheets because they use these for electric cars that they can handle surges of up to 6C or more. So I also doubled up the 150 amp bus bars so these can handle 300 amps. So you can push some serious power with these and they have great cooling because they're separated. So man, I just love everything about them. If you guys disagree, please let me know if there's anything that I'm missing, but these seem like a straightforward good buy and I would totally be down to experiment more with them. And for like a stationary setup with like 16 of these 100 amp hour batteries, you could have a serious backup system. And if you have like a Soul Arc grid tie inverter with these, that would be the best combination ever. You just have to add some kind of a BMS and you'd be done. And I wanna show my viewers one more test of how a low temperature charging protection system is supposed to work. So right now we're charging at 10 amps and we're gonna put the temperature sensor in salt water and watch what happens to the current. Look at that. It drops to zero in like five seconds. And watch what happens when I remove it from the cold water and I heat it up. 
Look at that, it just started charging. So that's how a system is supposed to work. Because yesterday I posted a video and it was not working and I wanna show you guys how simple of a system and how fast it's supposed to change. Anyways, we're gonna make some more videos with these cells because I like them a lot. They are so nice. So yeah, I will talk to you guys soon and I hope these are not out of stock in the next week because I need more of these. So I hope you guys like this video and please let me know what you guys think below. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts. So I'll talk to you soon and thanks for watching. Bye.